Drawing bowls is the topic of this beginner's guide video. I'll show two different ways of making them, together with discussing many other points, such as how to form the interior curve and how to distribute the clay so that you can trim a nice tall foot ring. This video won't go over the centering process so much, but I'll leave some links in the description below that'll take you to other beginner's guide videos, each of which specialize on one particular topic. I'll begin this demonstration by throwing two bowls in slightly different methods, each thrown from approximately one pound of clay, or about 454 grams. For the first bowl, after the lump of clay has been centered and opened up, I begin by immediately pulling the walls up and outward in the same movement. With each pull, I dig my knuckle firmly into the base, pressing that portion inward, which pushes some clay up into the base portion of the wall, which can then be pulled up into the curved sides. As you do this, you need to be careful not to constrict the bottom portion too much, as otherwise there's a chance the walls could slump, as there simply isn't enough clay beneath them to support them. But in theory, throwing directly to the throwing gauge's pointer, upward and outward, like this, is the most direct method of making bowls. Although I do feel the need to say quite early on that there is no best way of doing this. Rather, it's about finding what works for you and what you enjoy doing. Nonetheless, once the rim has been set, the pot wide through, and the bowl not so carefully lifted away, that's one piece finished. The second way of throwing a bowl goes like this. Once centered and opened up, I start by pulling the walls upward into a rough cylinder. It can angle outward slightly, but it's important to leave the cylinder to be relatively thick from top to bottom, especially the rim, as if that part is thrown to a wafer's edge at this point, the next step simply isn't possible. Once the cylinder is relatively tall, the walls are then stretched outward, bit by bit down into the same bowl shape we were making before. If you did begin this process with a very thin rim, it'll just split as it's drawn out. Equally, if you're working with clay that's relatively short as it's weak and has potentially been recycled too much, there's a chance this method won't work, as stretching the clay out like this can cause it to split all over. But with this method, it may be easier to throw bowls with thinner walls, although it adds a few steps to the process. But how they're finished is exactly the same. The bottom is undercut, the inside is cleaned, the rim is smoothed, then a wire is dragged underneath and the bowl lifted away. Fingers stuffed into the excess clay around the base and pried off. Here's the same two processes, but sped up, as it makes the differences far more clear. First is the cylinder that's then stretched out into a bowl, and then there's the method where the walls are thrown directly to the pointer. So when you are making bowls, you should actively think about which one of these two methods you're going to use, as having a plan to follow when you're throwing can be very helpful. When I'm centering a lump of clay for a bowl, I want the centered shape to be a sort of low disc form, a shape that's certainly wider than it is tall, even just a touch wider than you might think, as the extra width at this stage helps to provide clay beneath the walls that support them. And so after coning the clay up and down numerous times, I set the shape and roughly flatten the top. This is what I'm aiming for. I then take a wetted thumb and index finger and push them down into the middle, making sure that I don't press down too much, as ideally I want to leave about a centimeter and a half or two thirds of an inch in the base of the pot. And you can check this by pushing a needle through the bottom and then reaching a finger inside to the base and then pulling both out together. And I need this excess clay as ultimately a foot ring will be trimmed onto the bottom of these. These days though, instead of using a needle, I just compare the height of the interior versus the height of the metal on the outside. And with enough practice, you can just do it by eye like this. Here's a cross section of the centered shape I'm after. And at this point, you can quite clearly see how I've distributed the clay into the different areas I need it. There's plenty left in the base to trim an elegant foot ring from, and there's plenty either side too. This is clay on the left and right that'll be pulled up into the walls of the pot. I'll just mark out with a needle how the foot ring will sit underneath this pot. And as ultimately, I want these vessels to have a curved interior. When I open them up, I do so in a sort of V shape. I don't throw a flat interior base like I would on a mug or a vase. What this means though, is that for those first initial pulls, I have to pinch a really large expanse of clay and draw it up. 
and that alone can take some practice, especially if you're used to throwing flat bottom cylinders. Here's what my index finger is doing on the outside as I pull the walls up. I begin by pushing it in at the base and then drawing the clay up through my hands, like I normally would when throwing a pot, only this time I simply let the inertia of the wheel pull the form outward. I push in at the base with my fingers on the inside following suit and together they pull the walls up and out and they move at a very even, gradual pace. It's not a process I rush and when my fingers do reach the rim they very gently release. Here's the same process, this time with a view of my fingers from the inside. And as these are quite aggressive pulls, I make sure I add rather a lot of water on the inside so my fingertips don't stick to the walls as I'm making these. Typically you don't want to use too much water when throwing as it quickly saturates the clay and weakens it. And for bowls with overhanging walls, it can quickly cause disaster if it's taking you a long time to throw them. If you can throw them quickly, then it doesn't really matter. These probably take me about a minute or two to make from beginning to end. Initially, when pulling the walls, I'm not too concerned about the interior form. Rather, I'm just trying to get the rim to the correct height and width, which for these is 18 centimeters wide and seven centimeters tall. Once the dimensions are there, I'll then do one or two pulls to add more of a curve to the shape. And finally, I can sponge out all the excess water. Before I scrape clean the interior surface, I always undercut the form first, as doing this can sometimes cause a slight bump to raise up inside the shape, as the clay that's removed pushes up against the walls of the bowl, which you can just about see here. Once that's done, I then proceed to scraping clean the interior form. If instead I cleaned up the interior form and then removed the clay from the outside, I might deform part of the pot I've already spent time cleaning up, and so by doing it this way around, that can't possibly happen. Next I remove much of the slip from the inside. I don't need to get rid of all of it, rather my aim is to create a continuous curve. If I were to roll a ball down the interior form, I want it to rock slowly backwards and forwards until it comes to a natural stop, rather than it hitting any irregularities in the form that would otherwise stop it in its tracks or cause it to roll in an irregular manner. Of course you can make bowls of other shapes, but if you are throwing purposefully curved forms, then this is a good test to see if you're doing it right. Next, I'll show you the cross section of one of these bowls just after it's been thrown. As at this point, you can very clearly see how I've distributed the clay and where I've left enough material to trim the foot ring from later on. From this view, you can clearly see how uninterrupted that curve is. And from this excess clay in the base, you can see the areas where excess clay will be removed, where I score through it, like so. The idea is that we want the walls to be the same thickness as the base portion, and even the feet should have a similar thickness to the walls. And although this is an extreme example, as it has cracked in places for being too thin, here's how the same form looks once turned. The excess clay you see either side of the foot ring is incredibly important when it comes to lifting the pot away from the wheel, as it's this excess clay that I dig my fingers into and lift the pot off the wheel from. I use four digits to push in horizontally and they can sort of embed themselves into this excess clay as they lift, so it's held securely. I also try exceedingly hard to not let any other part of my hands or fingers touch the upper portion of the bowl. The only contact that's being made is with these four points that press into the circular base as if four points on a square, positioned equally around it. Beyond just lifting off correctly, using a twisted metal wire like this will help create a more distinct cut underneath the pot as compared to one of these smoother wires. Once cut through, the twisted metal wire leaves a pattern that's much less likely to stick. And finally, in the exact same moment I lift, I also spin the wheel, which breaks any sticky seal there might be. The tools I use for throwing bowls are very simple really. 90% of the job is done by hand, and then I use these five implements. First is this old blunted turning tool, which is used to undercut the base to create a dry area from which I can lift the pot away from. Next I use a scrap of sponge just to mop out the excess water and slip and then clean over this surface with a sharp metal kidney, compress the rim with this chamois leather, and then finally wire underneath the pot with the twisted metal wire. I think it's good practice to keep the tools you use quite restrained, as you don't need to clutter your wheel with dozens of tools when making such simple pots. And with that, all of these pieces are left to turn leather hard before being flipped upside down 
so their bases can be trimmed, and I'll make a more specialised video just about that process soon. Thanks, as always, for watching. Good luck potting, and I'll see you next week.